There is a new type of medicine that's not chemo that if you, uh, they're called anti-angiogenesis. So they cut off the blood supply feeding the big cancers. By the time, so here's a research experiment that was done a couple of decades ago in the lab that I worked in. If you grew tiny little cancer cells and up to the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen, that's about three millimeters in diameter, and you kind of floated them in uh, a broth and didn't allow them to touch blood vessels, they would just stay there at that size almost indefinitely, mm. okay? And in our body, that's the size that the immune system would wing by and take out. The moment you allow blood vessels to grow into that microscopic mass, that tumor will grow 16,000 times in two weeks. It'll explode. This is like a trigger that get pulled in order to have cancers grow up. Mm. And for that reason, biotech companies started to develop anti-angiogenic drugs to mm. ca treat cancer by cutting off the blood supply. So there are about a dozen anti-angiogenic drugs that have changed the game for treating kidney cancer and liver cancer and lung cancer and even brain cancer, all right? So we know that we can actually do this uh, with drugs. The question is, can we do it with food? Mm. Not so much when cancer is out of the barn, horses out of the barn, but what about prevention? What are foods that can prevent cancer? Well, it turns out that two apples a day actually can lower the rate of uh, lung cancer wow. and colon cancer. Why? Because there are natural substances in apples like quercetin, that's one of the natural chemicals that actually are naturally anti-angiogenic. Green tea actually has been lowered, lowered risk of colorectal cancer, okay? Uh, uh, particularly in women. And, uh, and what's in a, in a cup of green tea are these polyphenols, EG, CG. And when you drink it, it gets in your bloodstream. Why? Because the blood vessels are carrying it. And now your blood vessels loaded with this cancer starving stuff Mm. These little tumors don't have a chance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Is it the same as eating two apples a day and, and uh, you know, eating these specific foods as it would be just putting all those ingredients in a supplement and taking the supplement? Would, would that work just as well to have like a, the super supplement that is just the, the killer of all cancer and diseases, you know, of all these different nutrients? Well, look, I, I'm a researcher and so, and I've been involved with drug development. And so if it were that easy, it would have been done a while ago, right. but I can tell you that the whole, what I tell people is that the whole food is always going to be a little bit better okay. for the following reason. Number one, uh, for a supplement, you reduce it to a couple of different elements, you know, that, that you try to pack into a capsule, mm -hmm. the whole food, man, it's got the hundreds of not thousands of natural goodies and chemicals, including like an apple has got the skin, it's got ursolic acid. It's got fiber, which feeds your gut microbiome. It's got quercetin, which cuts off the blood supply. So you're getting all that in there um, compared to just one thing you try to pack into uh, a little capsule. That said, supplements are useful. And I'm, in, I'm involved with you know designing and developing supplements as well. What we want to do, supplements, uh, the term means topping off, mm. right? So you're supplementing, you're not replacing. Right. And right. this is what, you know, like what you were just asking, Lewis is so important. Like, can we just not bother eating and just have a supplement? <laughs> no, man. Like you should be eating because you enjoy mm. food. It's good for us. It brings people together. It tells us something about our traditions, our culture, our family, our community. Everybody's from someplace. There's everybody that's something that they love to eat. And, and of that list, there's some good stuff in it. And so we should really lean forward. So that's the other thing that's a little bit different from me that compared to a lot of other doctors that tell people what not to eat. Mm -hmm. I try to tell people what you should add to your life, not that what you should take away. Plenty of people can tell you what to take away. Right. I'm telling you what to add. And, and we should add foods that activate your health defenses. And supplements can be useful to top things off. Got it. I've been told uh many times that inflammation is the is uh, also a big i guess warning sign for diseases and cancers and the more inflammation the more your body is less capable of defending itself and its immune system is weaker is what i've been told um what would you say are the best ways to reduce inflammation in the body quickly is it through food is it through medicine is it through fasting is it through you know less you know, more sleep? Is it through a better environment? What would you say is the 
So, right. you know, a lot of people, I think um, when they hear about inflammation, they think about it as a bad guy. And what I want to tell you is that inflammation is normal and it's just part of our immune system. Mm -hmm. So when you actually have a bacteria or a virus invading your body, uh, let's say you get, get a cold, your immune system uh, sets up a little bit of inflammation in your nose, okay, which is why we have a stuffy nose, a runny nose, and then it takes it tackles the invader right then and there, mm -hmm. and then hopefully that's all that's all that matters. And by the way, uh, another sure sign of inflammation is if you um, cut yourself uh, in the kitchen, and you see that little cut will pretty quickly swell up, turn red, and swell up inflammation. That's your immune system trying to tackle all the bacteria that might be trying to get into your skin. Inflammation is good, but it goes up to protect you. And then it comes right down. I think about, I call it like a, like the volume switch in a car radio, like right. you get in a car, you want to hear some tunes, you got to turn it on. But what the problem with inflammation is when it doesn't go back down, it keeps on going more, 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 it's chronic and it keeps on going up. And that's like getting in your car and having somebody, a passenger turn up that volume and keep cranking that volume. And you're like, Hey man, turn that thing down. Right. right? Doesn't go down and you just can't go on. Right. And that's what happens inside your body. So what's it, what are the, some of the different ways to actually deal with that? Well, the first thing to do is think about lifestyle because we can actually give anti-inflammatories. I could tell you to go out to take some Motrin, Tylenol, whatever. Mm -hmm. That'll take down your inflammation, but actually there are ways of actually doing, if you actually just, um, if you stopped and just calmed yourself and took some breathe, did some breaths and start to meditate, your inflammation, your body's inflammation will start to calm down. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you actually got a good night's sleep, your body will start to, the inflammation will uh, start to calm down. It's, it's kind of like, you know, everything is going crazy. Just let everything, let the thing settle a little bit. So that's your inflammation settling down. Now there are foods that have a lot of anti-inflammatory properties that can be very helpful. So for example, cranberries, um, uh, I have a lot of anti-inflammatory polyphenols, um, chocolate even also has anti-inflammatory properties. Vitamin C is pretty anti-inflammatory. Strawberries, guava, red bell peppers, all really good, uh, really good. Um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, I, you know, I think that the other thing to think about is, uh, lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of fruits mm -hmm. in particular have anti-inflammatory, uh, mm -hmm. properties. So, the key about inflammation is that you don't want to get rid of it altogether. Okay. Okay. Like if you, if you got pumped up on steroids, it would shut down your inflammation. Mm. You might get infected because you don't have any inflammation. You want your body to get its set point. You want to get back to balance. So I think that, you know, there's lifestyle, there's uh, diet, uh, foods you can choose, there's sleep. All these things can actually help to calm inflammation. It's uh, not a single on and off switch. I'm curious, what would you say are the, the most harmful foods then? If you said here are three foods that we should be eliminating, what would be those most harmful foods that cause the spike in inflammation consistently and causes a lot of these other diseases and cancerous uh, cells to occur? Right. Well, I'll tell you three foods that actually harm the body's health defenses and including the immune system by ratcheting it up inflammation and then lowering the defensive properties, but also harm your DNA, also harm your microbiome, also blunt and stun your stem cells and also wreck your body's ability to control its blood supply. So it's a lot worse than okay. simply uh, uh, cause it triggering inflammation. And by the way, that's the whole point, right? Like we try to take the silver bullet approach to everything. Uh -huh. Let's match this with match that. What I'm telling you is that the body is this system. Yes. So either you introduce something good to it and you'll probably light up a lot of good systems. And if you put something bad to it, you'll probably trash a lot of it. Right. Okay. So uh, what are some three foods that actually we know uh, can trash your body's health defenses? One is soda. So sugar sweetened mm. beverages like soda. All right. So, uh, you know, the yeah. favorite ones. It's tough, yeah. right? Because I wish, we grew I, could, up... I wish I could go back to my younger self and say, put down the Dr. Pe eight cans of Dr. Pepper a day, you know, when you're like eight years old, man. Well, I, and I'm telling you, like, this is one thing that um, I always try to coach people on. If you really, really love sodas, okay, 
try to come off it, you know, just by going down one can a day, because mm-hmm. most people drink multiple cans, go down one can a day and, and get to as low as you can, because the added sugar actually overloads your body, mm. uh, your body's ability to be able to handle the sugar. And then it makes you inflamed just yeah. by the nature of the sugar. Eventually, I cut, out, I cut out, I cut out soda years ago. I mean, maybe I have it once in a, a couple months or something for like a treat, but yeah. It used to be almost an addiction probably for how much I drank it growing up as a kid in the summers. You're just drinking it nonstop, like water. Um, but then when I learned about nutrition more, when I was playing sports and realizing this is making me tired, it's not quenching my thirst. That's when I said, oh, okay, I need more of a competitive edge and kind of got it, cut it out of my life. So well, not um, only not only does it does soda actually, the sugar in soda cause inflammation it really wrecks your microbiome, your gut bacteria as well. Your gut bacteria just can't tolerate that much sugar. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then guess what? Uh, and, and then, you know, you say, well, wait a minute. Uh, uh, that's why we have diet uh, <laughs> soda, right? Exactly. Turns out that those artificial sweeteners and soda screw your microbiome, your gut bacteria even more. Ooh, more than regular can of soda. More, more than a regular can of Come soda. Come on. So if it says zero sugar and it's a soda or a pop, you're saying that could be more harmful than for just your, the, for your For your gut your, microbiome. Gotcha. gotcha. Right? Because a zero sugar is actually to prevent, you know, um, glucose spikes in your body. Uh-huh. But in point of fact, it actually wrecks your gut microbiome. And remember what I told you, that gut microbiome communicates your brain, communicates your immune system, communicates your healing systems. That is not a system you want to screw with. And so that's why, you know, I try to tell people um, you really got to watch out for those uh, artificial sweeteners. Uh, they are, they, they, they do some bad things. So that's one thing. So what are the, what are the best, before you go to the next thing, what are the best sweeteners we should be looking for when we're adding something into food or sure. we see it on the packaging? Sure. Well, natural sugars um, uh, in, in fruits and vegetables, people go, well, I don't want any sugar in them, but what about in a peach? Mm-hmm. There's nothing better than a summer peach to me. And that natural sugar is okay because when you eat the peach, you're not just getting the sugar, you're also getting all these other bioactives mm-hmm. and the fiber and everything Fibers, else, yeah. hundreds the hundreds of thousands of, of natural chemicals that are good for you from mother nature's kind of mm-hmm. pharmacy with an yes. F. OK, so that's different than just, you know, having sugar in a glass yeah, yeah. or corn syrup. <laughs> right. Uh, high fructose corn syrup. Not not good for you. Um, maple syrup, a good way to sweeten. OK. Honey is also a good way, way to uh, sweeten as well. Monk fruit is actually a really, really sweet uh, tasting uh, gourd. That's a shell um, that is uh, also a, a decent uh, sweetener. Stevia actually pretty powerful sweetener. Um, I've been doing some research on, I haven't been able to find anything wrong with it. Uh, but, but for people that are looking at stevia, be very careful, pick up that package and look at the side of the box and what you, and read what's on there. Because a lot of things that are called stevia actually have a lot of other things added to it. Okay. So you want to get the pure stuff. I always tell if it's in a box, look at what's inside it before you buy it. 